Okay, boys and girls, today we're going to be taking a look at Adventure Knives. So without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and check out that Patreon below. Anyways, now let's jump into it. So like I said, today we're going to be taking a look at Adventure Knives. Now, what I mean by an Adventure Knife is something that fills the role between something that's a camping and kind of survival knife, something that can be pushed into scouting, finding new locations. Uh, these are the types of knives that I choose when doing those types of roles. So what I mean is, like, when you see a lot of the YouTube videos in the summer, they're at kind of designated areas that I've kind of built up, built shelters around, and that helps with the smoothness of, you know, having a place to return to, to uh, film reviews and do stuff like that. But in that meantime, you have to scout out locations, you have to find places, and so what I look for in a tool that is an adventure knife is something that can kind of hold its own, kind of be its own kind of one tool show. Now obviously it's not perfect, and not all of these tools what I recommend for a casual user. You probably wouldn't enjoy them very much in those regards, but as adventure knives that can kind of hold their own in a wide variety of different tasks, whether that's blazing trails, starting fire, building shelters, that's kind of where these adventure knives come into play. So these knives definitely aren't for everyone or for and not everyone will have this type of need for a knife. But for those that do and for people like me, I thought I would uh, mention some of the knives that I think are really great adventure knives. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first one on the list is one that is the budget offering and so if you can't get some of these more expensive more wild designs that are probably a little bit better fit for bushcraft or for adventuring this is probably the top choice and this is an ontario uh, or okc rat 7. now the rat 7 is very similar to the sc6 of course it's obviously just an inch bigger than the sc6 it's the rat 7 but because the sc6 is also on this list and i think that the sc6 is a good multi-role multi-purpose blade i think that the rat 7 is on has to be on this list because if you are looking for something that's under a hundred dollars that will fill this adventure knife role very well this is going to be the choice that i would recommend so and that is the rat 7 by okc or ontario knife company and once again we'll talk a little bit more about this kind of knife when we talk about the sc6 so like I said, we're going to talk about the SE6. Now I will say I do like the SE6 setup a little bit more. I have this one running in a reverse scout option so that I can be put on like the small of my back more easily. And this is a really fantastic, very versatile knife. Being of 1095, it's pretty durable, albeit the edge retention might not be the best. But this is a knife that you can really beat on, beat the hell out of, and it will keep on going. It's not going to break, similar to the Rat 7. These are very, uh, very durable design knives, not to mention SE or Randall's Adventure Training or Rat, as they are known. Uh, come from a kind of adventure background. They do more search and rescue and kind of seer, like escape and evasion type skills, but the the background around this knife or the people who designed it definitely are kind of adventurous in my opinion and so they kind of design adventure knives so whether it is camping or adventure the sc6 is really going to fit into this role quite well so the next one like I said on the list has to be the sc6 and really this is kind of the beginning if you don't count the budget offering very comfortable handle too and this knife kind of sets the tone for the overall size that I'm looking for. With a lot of these adventure knives, I want them right around 10 to 11 inches. And that's because I want them to be able to be bigger, baton through bigger pieces of wood, or just have a more multi-purpose blade, which we'll see in a little bit. Okay, so the next one is going to be the Falcon Even A1. Now, the A1 is on this list because it's the most... Um, it's the most temperature neutral and it's a very well rounded knife. Now this is more of a traditional knife, similar to the SE. The next two are gonna be less traditional knives, but still it is a big knife. It is a very thick, very thick blade, as you can see uh, in comparison to my fingers here. Uh, this is a very thick blade, but very capable. Now once again, like I said, in these cold environments, like it is right now, this is going to be a reasonably comfortable knife to hold and to use in these types of environments. So if your adventuring is in 
wet environments, if it's going to be in cold environments, the A1 is probably what you're going to want to go towards because it's going to be able to handle a lot of situations, but also be co more comfortable and quite durable. So that is the Falcon Even A1. Okay, so the next one, and it almost goes without saying, is the Topps TB Tracker. Now, once again, the original purpose of the Adventure Knives, for me, was to be a knife that really held its own and could do multiple different tasks. It's almost more like pushing into a tool that looks like a knife, as opposed to a knife that functions as a knife. So the TB Tracker is a pretty good example of this. Of course, you can use this area for hacking, chopping, and those kind of tasks, and then you have a little bit more refined kind of knife-esque uh, grind for doing smaller tasks but but ultimately this is the type of tool that you're going to be using when it comes down to doing multiple different tasks with one single tool and by multiple tasks I mean effectively building shelters effectively starting fires doing that kind of thing with this knife so I also did grind off the uh, coating on the back it's not the best striker for fire rods but it does work pretty well you can also use these saw teeth two uh, for striking ferro rods so and that is the tops tb tracker now with this knife like i said it's not the most intuitive but if you practice with the tops tracker it is a very good multi use knife almost pushing more into a tool that just looks like a knife in addition i also have the trc mini running as its companion blade so and that is the first of the kind of technical uh, adventure knives. So the second one is going to be the so the second one, or the last knife on the list, is going to be the Amic by 3DK. Now, once again, very similar to the very similar to the TB Tracker. This one has a more this one has a re recurved edge, pushing this kind of portion, the belly out in front of the primary cutting edge so that gives you the ability to chop hack and do stuff like that with the front portion with a little bit greater ease so you can back up on the handle and you know kind of pull back and chop with the front portion of the blade that's also why the handle is so long as you guys can see here i can comfortably grab the middle of this and still have a good portion in front and behind that's designed so that you can choke back to do things like chopping and you can choke forward to do more precise tasks like feather sticking and precision uh, things like feather sticking or blazing trees for trail kind of creation. So once again, that's the idea of a lot of these adventure knives is that they should be serving a role or the objective of specifically uh, recon, scouting, and multi-purpose uh, light duty tasks. Now these are not the kinds of knives that I would first choose. Now these aren't the kind of knives that I would first choose when it comes down to living forever in the wilderness. Adventure knives are designed, once again, for my purposes, like going out, scouting, finding locations to build shelters or build you know, different things, um, that's where I use these knives. They're gonna be light duty operations where I'm gonna be out in the field maybe six hours to a day tops. I'm not going to be using these knives for a week straight and I need to rely on this thing, you know, to skin my game animal. These knives may not be the best. Now, can these knives do some of those tasks? Sure, but you know, when you break out something like a Topps TB tracker here, you're not really gonna wanna be skinning a little rabbit with the tracker. You know, this is, like I said, really mission focused to if I'm trying to pack light, I'm trying to pack simple and I want to go out, uh, scout a location to build up a shelter or fortification and I don't want to take a hatchet and a saw with me throw the tops tracker plus my survival kit, my personal survival kit that you guys have probably seen on the channel if you watch, um, you know, throw the PSK, throw the TV tracker, you know, on my belt or throw both of them on my belt and roll. And that way I have a simple tool set that is capable of doing multiple things. If I do need to stop and start a fire, if I do need to stop and build something, I can do that. But definitely if I need to blaze a trail or make something obvious for me when I'm coming back with a full backpack, you know, with a full bushcrafting setup, that's what these knives are there to do. They're to pave the trail for me to come back with more equipment because one thing is about Alaska. It's very large, it's very expansive here. So, you know, I try to scout out my locations to 
I try to scout out my locations before I go into them. That way I have a light kit that is easy to maneuver with and I know what I'm getting myself into. So that's kind of the premise and the ultimate purpose behind a lot of the adventure knives. Like I said, the two most specific adventure knives, the TB Tracker and the 3DK Amok or Amic, uh, are really designed to be almost multi-tool knives so that you can push them into multiple roles that they can do very well. Certainly the more traditional knives also are very functional. Things like the A1 and the SC6 are great, fantastic general purpose knives that will do just about everything. But of course, when you compare something like the A1 to the AMUC here, which I'll grab out, the AMUC to the A1, you can clearly see that, you know, the blade on the AMUC is going to be a lot more capable at chopping. In addition, when you look at the handles, you know, the AMUC has a much larger handle, so you can really get back and get greater leverage. So that's what the kind of design purpose and mindset behind choosing one of these knives like the AMUC or the TB Tracker for adventuring is. That's, that's the purpose behind it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, guys. Hopefully it was helpful and like I said I realize not everyone goes out on scouting missions and not everyone you know does the same type of uh, not everyone's trying to meet the same objectives that I do but I thought because I do actually use specific different knives for different roles these are the types of roles or these are the types of knives I use for the role of adventuring scouting and reconnaissance in that regard so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed this video as always God bless and I'm out